and welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West, and our guest today is Robert Sheeman. That's right. Did I get it right? Good. Okay. I'm on my way to becoming <laughs> rich. I got the name right. And he's author and has written a very interesting book, which frankly, how's that idiot rich and I'm not? I can't think of anybody who hasn't been sitting in a car or gone to some event and said to himself, if I'm so smart, how come that idiot's so rich? How did you come up with this title? Well, uh, Judith, we've all said it. We've all thought it. Whatever level you're at. When I was making you know, $6 an hour, I thought it. When I was making uh, $200 an hour, I thought it. When I had a lot of money, I thought it. And uh, I want to kind of reveal the secrets of what are these people doing. They're not the brightest bulbs in the tanning bed. I was voted uh, most likely yeah, I to wanna, fail. Well, I, I want to <laughs> go to that. You have this theory, actually. Um, and I want to I explore that theory. Most of us read about people that get selected at, uh, at their, in their graduating class, <laughs> most likely to succeed. Um, you, kind, you were the kind of the guy that might, might have gotten the title least likely to succeed. And you have this theory that though folks that are least likely to succeed are the folks that turn up at 20th high school reunions <laughs> having succeeded. That's right. Will you explain that to me? And to our audience? Well, I think, Judith, I think we live in an upside-down world. I mean, look at all the stuff we're taught, we're brought up to do. I know I was brought up to go work for a company, you know, uh, be a good boy for 60 years. Uh, when you're 70 or something, you can retire, save a few pennies, have fun for a year or two, and then you die. Uh, get a gold watch or yeah, something. Yeah, whatever. Right. And I didn't like that plan. And we kind of live in an upside-down world. And uh, we're brought up, most of us, to believe we're not rich, that there's not enough out there, that it's a secret club, that you have to have money to make money. And none of it's true. I thought that was, that was true. And uh, when I was about 20, uh, six, seven years old, I wasn't doing well at all. I met a gentleman. He never got out of high school, uh, didn't have a computer. He was making uh, about $100,000 a month from real estate investing and taking six months vacation a year. And I'm thinking, you know, if this guy who wasn't the brightest light bulb in the tanning bed can do this, you know, maybe I got a chance. So you thought, how come, the, how come he's doing it and I'm not? Right. But going back earlier, even when in your in your youth, um, you you kind of had this um, unorthodox approach to your early years too. Right. I remember reading. Um, tell us the story. I thought it was cute when you were bus boy, but you didn't call yourself bus boy. What did you call yourself? Right. Well, when I was 15, I moved out of my own. I started working as a bus boy at Ruby Tuesdays. And I didn't like that title. You know, it's not impressive. Bus so I made him make me an apron that said table maintenance engineer. Table maintenance engineer. Yeah. Okay. You know, I've got pride. Right. And, I, you know, I really liked the job. We worked on tips. And I realized that you, when you can control how much money you make. And most jobs you can't. Right. So I made really good tips. And actually, I started making more than some of my teachers when I was 16. Right. Now, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Right. You know? Well, you know, I have to say, I, uh, you know, this show is called Getting Your Money's Worth, and I have to say, there have been times that we, I've uh, interviewed folks who are college counselors, right. and uh, there's a certain theory coming up that maybe everybody doesn't need to be paying a quarter of a million dollars to go to college for four years, and maybe there's another way to use <laughs> that quarter of a million dollars. That's right. Let's say you to that. <laughs> you know, Judith, I've also thought that, you know, uh, all the money spent on education, if you take that three or four hundred thousand dollars invested, right. they can right. retire or never have to work yeah. you know but they go spend on education they get out of school with tremendous debt huh. you know they're paying two three thousand and the parents, a month. Not the parents themselves don't have tremendous debt from it that's right. right they're already behind the eight ball and now they're stressed out and that's another part about being rich you know um, I think if you're stressed out uh, you can't be rich okay so let's so uh, let, for all those folks out there and you call them rubs what's a rub again <laughs> well they're doing everything right uh, and they're upside down and broke. And they're broke. It's like, I'm playing by the rules. So if I played by the rules and I went to a good college and I got good grades and I'm listening to you and I'm broke and you're not broke, though I have to say you, you got a good education at Emory, which is a very hard school to get into. Right. So how come, how come what can I do to change to go from being a rub to being a rich idiot right. let's go through that because we want to give people their money's worth and I know people have heard before but I believe it's that it starts with belief you know belief. what's between the ears you have to believe that you're wealthy and a part of that is gratitude and explained in the book if you don't have gratitude for where you are now or what you have I don't think you can ever be wealthy. And I'll give you an example, Judith. I have a friend who's worth $20 million. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And he worries Even in today's about, time. He worries about money every day. He's stressed out. He's not rich. So it's not just about the money. It's about an attitude. 
And uh, then, you know, how do you treat yourself? How do you live? Well, let's just go. So you have to have, you, in fact, I think you have, to, I think you call it in your book, you have to think rich and act rich. That's right. Is that possible to do when you're not rich, Robert? It, it's possible. It's not easy because I've been both places. It's not you know? easy. Right. I've been. If you're struggling to pay the bills, right. it's darn hard to think you're rich. That's right. But a lot of it, I think there's a, a universal laws, there's an energy to money, there's a flow to it. And until you believe right, it's not going to work. Let me give you an example. I was broke. You know, some people say living paycheck to paycheck. I was yeah. going hour to hour. You know, <laughs> it was bad. And, you know, when you, what you focus on expands. So I focused all the time. I don't have money. I can't pay my bills. And that lasted for years. It's almost like a, the poker player who sits down has to win. That's right. And the moment I, I, I heard this stuff, I didn't believe it. And finally, I tried it. I said, okay, the money's oh, coming. Okay. It's coming. We'll, we'll give you that. you got to believe. Okay. Yep. I want you to turn me in. When this is over, I'll get my money's worth <laughs> if you turn me into a rich idiot. Okay? There you go. Okay. i got to believe it myself. Done. Finished. Right. Next. What do I have to do next? And when we say live rich, we're not saying go out and buy Rolexes you can't afford. But you, uh, there's two markets out there, retail, full price, and wholesale. There's a wholesale market for everything. So you can live a little better, drive a nicer car, take nicer trips on probably the same money you're spending now. Uh, same with real estate. You know, you, well, you, you would make an example. Um, uh, uh, you talk about buying a used car instead yeah. of buying a new car. I always drive really nice cars. As a matter of fact, I have a limousine I bought out of foreclosure for $11,000. And my driver drives me around, and when he's not driving, we make money. So I actually get paid to have a limousine. <laughs> oh, you, uh, good idea! You and, and we pull up to people, right. and they go, you know, Robert's riding on a limousine. That must be a hundred. It's a ninety thousand dollar limo. It's a couple and, years and old. And actually, it's making money for you when you're not in it. Yeah, good and idea. I go, how much is your car? Well, my Toyota's, you know, eighteen thousand. Well, my limo's cheaper. Right. And you know, you can buy. So, learn how to buy stuff learn, correctly. Learn, learn how to buy correctly. Yeah. Okay. And but, okay, so that's another piece of it. Right. Let's get to the really making that good get, money but part. Let's get, I was saying, but let's get let's get to the heart of the matter. Yeah. The bottom line is the only real way to get wealthy, unless you're a CEO or maybe an anesthesiologist or, you inherit or something. something, is own assets. Own assets. Okay. And we walk so you through. So how do you get to that point? If you don't have money, I think, what are assets? Real estate? We'll talk with real estate. That's right. most time. There's basically three categories. Okay. And, and you got to do one of them. I like to do all three. Okay. So uh, well, let's, let's see if we can get through all three of them sure. uh, by going um, you know, briskly through them. So if you're broke or you're just you know, making ends meet. Now you're going to tell me that I have the ability to go buy real estate? Um, How am I going to do that? Well, if you think you can't, then you can't. And if you okay. think you can, you can. Okay, I think I can. How? Right. Now, number one, the first part of the book on the money part gets you in control of your debt. You know, the whole problem right now, recession, doom, gloom, is people spent more than they were bringing in. You know, if you're making $4,000 well, a listen, month, you can't have a $3,000 mortgage. To, maybe, maybe they listened to you. They were broke and they got real estate. <laughs> I, hope, but, I hope you're not behind the subprime mortgage. Absolutely not. Robert. If they would have followed these rules, we'd have no problems because it's the basic old rules of what's coming in. you got to spend less. Okay. And we show you how to get out of debt the bad debt. There's also good debt. So there's a way to buy money uh, even if you don't have a lot of money. There's That's a right. way to use other people as as partners who may have the money. Right. You may be the person who finds it. They may be the person who finances it. And really, is real estate a good thing to buy now? I believe so. Uh, and just like stocks and bonds, I look for the long term. Americans look short term. They try to speculate. They get hurt. That's why I got a problem right so now. So really, if you believe in the theory that money's made in the buy, That's right. I'm in retail, money's made in the buy and not in the sell, you come from a retail family. This you, this might be a good time to, to sniff out some real estate value. There's always deals, but right now when everybody's selling, that's when you need to be buying a little more because there's deals right now, and we're seeing deals at 50 cents on the dollar in almost every market. Yeah, and the one good thing about real estate, it, it's unlike a stock, you know, the value may go up and it may go down, but one thing, it's not going to disappear. That's right. right. And I have rent coming in, and that's much more than the mortgage. So you talk about uh, three, con you have three properties in your asset right. class, the home you own, Right, and but, two other investment properties. And two properties. other investment properties that pay rent. And you also, well, we're not going to do it today, but you detail how to, uh, how to crunch the numbers to that's see if right. they're going to pay. Okay, so that's the one asset class, real right, estate. Right, three deals and you're yeah, done, and real you're estate. Done. Three deals and you're done. Okay, put that. Then, so now I'm on to my next, or, or concurrently I'm doing the next, which is stocks and bonds. Right. Good time to do that too. Always. How am I going to do that? A little bit of dollar, a few dollars every day? Well, again, we're going to show you to get your spending under control very quickly, how to raise cash from places you didn't know. 
Uh, and here's the point is uh, last week a lot of the people spent $89 at Starbucks, you know? They, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you, you take $89 and put it in the market and underperform the market, over time in 30 years you're going to have over a million dollars. Right. So what you got to do is start a systematic program. You don't have to figure out the market. You don't have to guess when's the best time to buy you over just have long to, you term. You just have to do it conscientiously and diligently. That's right. And stick and stick with it. That's right. And start. And, and most start. people never start or they start too late. But you can't, but you don't, you don't start by picking a stock, you start by giving it to a professional. A professional. That's right. Or a mutual fund that's well run, low expenses, low and let expenses, the pros do and it. And let the pros do it. See, smart people, and I used to be smart, try to figure it out. It's hard to do. Smart people, you make a distinction about that in your book. I like, like rich idiots <laughs> figure know that they have to pay for certain things that they can't do, certain services that, that they cannot do as efficiently. That's right. right. And it's all about uh, getting rich as a team sport. See, people think they have to do it all themselves. I got to do the real estate myself, the stocks and bonds, my business myself. And my goal is to do very little. Let the pros do their job. Right. And if you have to give them a piece of it, so what? Yeah. It's still more than not having a, a, a half the pie or three fourths course of pie is better than no pie That's at all. That's right. And a lot of people right now are deciding on no pie or negative pie. Right. <laughs> right. And thirdly, what's the third? third? Is a oh, business. Start your own business. Yeah, okay. now that's not for now everybody. That's not for everybody. Right. right. But a lot of people, if they want to, and we show you how to take what you love and turn it into a business. Because if you don't love what you're doing, it, it, it's not going to work. Right. Or, you know, yeah, you might make money. But and you have to have enough cash or enough wherewithal to give you staying power in your own business. You can't expect to start it that's and, right. and hit a home run right away. We right? tell everyone to start part time. And there's tons of business out there you can start for less than $100. We're not talking about spending a uh, hundred thousand dollars on and a franchise. You know, franchise. it's much easier today because you can go on the internet That's and get, right. a, uh, get a plan for a decent business plan. You don't have to spend a lot of money to start your own business, and you can start it in your spare time. That's right. In fact, I was very surprised, and we have only a couple of minutes left, and I want to touch on it that when you, that you make mention in your book about how much money can be made in the virtual world. That's right. That really surprised me. And I didn't know that uh, at all, and I learned about a year or two ago. You got to be flexible. Virtual ver property. Right. There's people isn't making like, millions of isn't dollars. Isn't that like playing Monopoly? It is. I don't understand it, but I don't, I don't, I don't need to. It. It's making money. Right. I, right. So but what other people do is they analyze. They why well, that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it doesn't matter. It yeah. makes you money. Well, I have to say, looking at you, Robert, you're tan. You're well dressed. <laughs> I mean, if that's what it looks like to be a rich idiot, <laughs> God, please. I read your book. I, I have to say, I had it with me. I read your book. I enjoyed your book. And I learned from it. Thanks. I learned from it. So. Um, and the uh, part about being a rich idiot is if you got to do what you love to do, right. and also be grateful for and what I you have. And I think the word idiot is there is something there in the word idiot because the 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 implication is that if you if you're always thinking about playing by the rules and you're always planning, and you're not taking some risk and doing it. Your probably your chances of getting rich are are slim, much right. slimmer, right? So for, for for so for all of our folks out there that aren't idiots, <laughs> <laughs> I recommend that you read your book and become a rich idiot, right? And the goal is you get it, you do what's in there, and, and people you, and look you at ask. you and they'll say, hey, how yeah, come that you, idiot's rich and I'm not? Right, That's exactly. the goal. And they'll become that. <laughs> they'll become that person. Thank you for being on the show. It's Thank a pleasure you. to have you. Enjoy right. it all. Thank you for watching.